Right, so I grew up in Adelaide, Australia. Um, yeah, so um, I mean, I, I, ever since I, I can remember, I always liked mathematics. I, uh, my parents say that when I was two, I, I, I don't remember this myself, but when I was two, they found me trying to teach some other kids how to count uh, using these wooden blocks. Um, and uh, they asked me how I had learned this. And he, uh, apparently I had learned it by watching Sesame Street on, and I just uh, learned by myself. So um, yeah, I always enjoyed doing mathematics. Um, I mean, very simple mathematics when I was, when I was younger. Um, the first memory I have of doing mathematics was maybe when I was a bit older, maybe four or five. Um, my grandmother was washing the windows at our house. And uh, I was telling her to, to, put, to, to put the detergent on the windows in the shape of numbers. Um, I always liked numbers and, and logic puzzles and computer games. Somehow, uh, always things that are very precise. Um, there's things with a right answer and a wrong answer. I always liked these sort of very, very precise uh, um, uh, questions. And so I always liked mathematics. Um, it was only a lot later, once I was at university, that I realized that mathematics is also useful for doing things. But I, I think I just liked it for its own sake. Um, my parents say that, that if they wanted to, to shut me up at night, they would give me a, a math workbook, and I would just solve the, the, uh, the um, math questions. I just like doing that. I mean, my, my mother was a high school mathematics teacher uh, before she moved to Australia. Um, my father was a doctor, uh, he still is a doctor. Um, yeah, um, well, I mean, I, I, I was the, uh, the I was the first child, so I don't know. I mean, to me, I, 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 it felt normal to me growing up because I had nothing else to compare it to. Um, I did skip a lot of grades, and they, they, my mother had to drive me. All, all, you know, so whenever I was in primary school, I'd, I'd be taking math classes in high school, and when I was in high school, I'd be taking math classes in, at, uh, um, at the local university. So I was, I was always, my mother was always driving, and they were always negotiating with the, the headmaster of the school how to. To, to, you know, I've been missing all these classes and, and, and uh, yeah, they had to make all these special arrangements for me. Because um, there, there was no program at the time for accelerated uh, um, education. So they, everything they just had to, it was uh, improvised. Uh, well, it worked out well for me. I think uh, like all the teachers, they, 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 they looked out for me. Um, and my schoolmates, you know, I mean, you know it was so, sort of, I took many classes where other kids were maybe four or five years older than me, and maybe for the first week or so it was strange. Um, but after a while, I think it, 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 you, you get accustomed to it. You know, um, I mean, I had the same difficulty with the class that my classmates had. You know, it was so we would, we would still be talking about how to solve the homework questions and joking about the teacher and so on. Yeah, just, um, but you know, there were lots of little things. Um, when I was, uh, I think maybe. Uh, um, uh, how old was I? Maybe uh, around 11 or 12. I, I would be taking um, high school um, advanced math classes, and they had a special cushion for me to sit on the chair because I couldn't reach the, the desk uh, without the cushion. So they had, to, they had to keep a special cushion in, 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 in the classroom. But, you know, uh, other than that, uh, you know, it felt normal to me. Um, I think. Yeah, initially these, the, um, there, there was a particular retired math professor who I would spend the weekends with, and, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, I think he really helped sort of uh, make math really enjoyable for me. I mean, it's, I mean, I, re I already enjoyed like solving the math problems, but but uh, you know, le learning that it was useful for uh, for other things. Um, you know, I had an undergraduate advisor who um, really encouraged me to uh, to do mathematical research. You know, I, you know, at the time I didn't really know that you could actually um, make a living as a mathematician. You know, I thought maybe I could become a shopkeeper or something because I, I, I like numbers, so I, I could at least you know do the accounts. Um, so he encouraged me to, to study abroad, to go to. I, mean, I went to America, I went to Princeton to do my PhD, um, and then my PhD advisor, um, you know, he also was. Uh, um, um, he encouraged me a lot to to, to stay, um, you know, not to return. Directly to to Australia, but you know to, to, to keep studying abroad, and uh, so I took a position at uh, in, in Los Angeles, and uh, that was a really good move. Actually, I, I really that was a really perfect environment for me. Uh, so it keeps changing. Every few years, I I, I, I learn new areas of mathematics. Um, 
I, 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 keep, um, I, I get influenced a lot by my co-authors. Um, so, you know, I started out in harmonic analysis, um, so the study of waves. Um, and then, um, you know, when I, I came to UCLA, um, I, I, I met another postdoc who was um, studying partial differential equations, and then I got interested in that. And then um, I met Ben Green, I got, who was working in number theory. I got interested in number theory, and I got interested in combinatorics. Um, currently, I think I'm, I, I'm most interested in two areas of mathematics. Um, one is fluid equations. Um, I'm interested in uh, things like the Navier-Stokes equations, the equations that, that govern water. Um, there's a very famous question about um, whether um, um, solutions to these equations ever develop singularities, whether um, uh, you, can, you can find some state of water which will eventually become singular, like water velocity becomes infinite. Um, I believe you can do this, but I don't yet know how to actually uh, create such, such a solution. Um, and the other area I'm interested in, in right now is uh, uh, the most is, uh, is number theory, um, the study of things like prime numbers, um, other sequences and functions related to the prime numbers, trying to find patterns in them. Um, the, the prime numbers, are, are, they, they seem to behave very randomly, but it's very hard to actually quantify this and prove that, that actually there are, there are no extra patterns in the primes that we don't already know about. Um, so, yeah. Currently, those are the two things I'm most interested in. They're not related to each other, at least I don't think so. Um, but in two years, I don't know, I'll be working on something else. Hmm. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, it's the results that I don't know how to prove yet, which I, I really am most, you know, I, 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 I want the most. Once you prove something, it, uh, it doesn't seem so difficult anymore. It's like, um, when you solve a crossword puzzle, you know, there's a clue and you, and you, um, you don't know the answer and, and you think it's very tricky, but once you see it, oh, it's, it's obvious, you know, and, and you don't think so much of it. Um, so it's hard to think of what I did in the past. Maybe the, um, um, so um, I did this work with um, an applied mathematician, Emmanuel Candes, on um, what's now called compressed sensing, um, which is a, a technique for recovering data like an image um, using many fewer measurements than traditional measurement methods. Um, so um, uh, it's, it's a very practical problem, but Emmanuel had this, this gift of, of turning it into a, a, like a, a, a purely mathematical question, which I could, I could, I could help with. Um, and this is maybe the one thing that I worked on which actually has a very practical application. So it's used, for instance, nowadays to, to speed up um, MRI scans. Um, an an Im MRI image which may have taken you know, three minutes to, to scan now it takes like 20 seconds, you know, which is actually can be very helpful. Um, so maybe that's the thing I'm, I'm most proud of because it actually uh, has, has actual uh, reward impact. Most of what I do is, is very theoretical. It's never really a eureka moment. It's, it's, it's always like, oh, this is so obvious. Why didn't I see that before? Um, one time I do remember was, was that there was this, this differential equation I was trying to solve. And um, it, was, it was somehow very nonlinear. I, I, the, 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 um, the equation was, was oscillating very wildly and I, I couldn't understand it. And I remember once, um, eventually I, I, I decided to try to visualize it. You know, I tried to visualize being the wave that the, the equation was, uh, was modeling. And I remember having my eyes closed on the floor. I was rolling around trying to imagine how different parts of the wave evolved. Um, and uh, in fact, my, I was staying at my aunt's place at the time, and she, and she, she saw me rolling on the floor, and she, I, I couldn't explain to what I was doing. But I did actually understand. Um, I, I found a way to transform the solution to make it easier to solve. Um, and and it, it actually helped quite a lot to, right, to sort of physically, to physically do that. Um, yeah, so I, 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 I do like to translate an abstract math problem into something sort of very, very physical, like make, make an analogy or something which is uh, um, yeah, from the real world, because uh, then I can use more intuition to, to understand it. Um, so it was for several pieces of work, I think, but, but perhaps the, the one which is the most well known uh, was, was my work with Ben Green on um, finding patterns in the prime numbers. Um, so um, what we proved actually, uh, we, so we solved this, 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 this old problem of uh, showing that inside the prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, uh, you can always find um, arithmetic progressions of any length. So for example, 3, 5, and 7 is an arithmetic progression of length 3. But you can find progressions no matter how, how big. 
uh, how long you want. You can always find a progression of length 10, length 20. Um, so the, 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 um, the reason this was difficult is that the prime numbers get, get sparser and sparser. There are, there are fewer and fewer prime numbers um, as a proportion of the, of the integers as you go out to infinity. Um, and uh, it was known how to find progressions in very dense set of numbers, but this is a very sparse set. Um, but we were able to use some ideas from a field of mathematics called ergodic theory um, that we could somehow approximate or, or model um, this very sparse set of primes by a very dense set. Um, and so, um, and we didn't know much about this dense set, but there was another result of Andrei Zamoretti that any dense set of numbers contained progressions. And we, could, we could put these two things together. Um, so, you know, at the, at the time it was a very new idea. Uh, now it's a very standard tool. So, so there are lots of other um, results in this area which use this kind of approximation decomposition. But we were, we were quite happy to have discovered this uh, at, the, at the time. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. so the, the Goldbach conjecture, well, there's, there's two Goldbach conjectures. There's the even Goldbach conjecture, um, which is that every even number bigger than six is the sum of two primes. Uh, so that's, un, that's not solved. Um, and then there's the odd conjecture, which is easier. Uh, the odd conjecture says every odd number bigger than, uh, I think, nine is the sum of three primes. Um, and that was solved actually a few years ago. Um, so it was known for a long time that every large odd number is a sum of three primes. This is a result of Vinogradov from like 1920 something. Um, but large is really, really large, like bigger than 10 to the 1400 or something. something. So um, all these other numbers uh, yeah, we, we, uh, was, was not known. Um, and uh, so, yeah, um, I wanted to, to work on this problem actually with, with a friend, uh, Ben Green again. Um, and so, um, yeah, the, 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 the more numbers, the more primes you allow to use, the easier the question becomes. So, so what I was able to prove was that every odd number bigger than, I guess, what, uh, maybe um, 11 or something, is the sum of uh, five primes. Um, and uh, this was a lot easier because, uh, uh, yeah, you can pick, um, it was already known, I think, that any number, any even number less than, what, 10 to the 20 or something is the sum of two primes. So you just needed to split up any big number into three primes plus a number less than 10 to the 20 or something. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, it, 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 I use sort of the, the same sort of techniques that everyone was using in the past, but, but you just had to have very, very precise estimates. Um, but uh, yeah, you had lots and lots of very careful integration and, and, and being very, very efficient. Um, and then shortly after that, uh, it was improved. So, so Howard Helfgott eventually solved the entire um, Goldbach conjecture um, by actually much more delicate and much longer argument, actually. So I think my paper was like 20 pages, and he has a book of like 200 pages where he, actually, he proves the whole thing. Yeah, so the odd Goldbach conjecture is, is now completely solved. Um, the even one is much, much more difficult. Uh, we, we are missing, uh, we don't, I think we don't have the technology yet to, so, to solve that problem. That's one of my favorite questions. One day we'll solve it, but we're not quite there yet. Right, so, um, yeah, so Paul Erdős was famous for giving out all these, all these uh, conjectures, which um, in fact he would offer little cash prizes for solving these things. Um, I actually met Paul Erdős uh, when I was very young, uh, like when I was 10. Uh, and there's a photo of me on the internet you can see with, with me and, and, and Paul. Um, and yeah, he would just give problems to people to solve. Um, yeah, so he, he had this question about, um, about sequences. So, so if you take a sequence of plus and minus ones, uh, um, the question is whether you can find an arithmetic progression uh, where, where the sequence was, uh, was very unbalanced, where there was more plus ones than minus ones or more minus ones than plus ones. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so it, it was, it was a, a well-known conjecture. Um, I had worked on it in the past. So um, Tim Gowers, who was another field mentalist uh, at Cambridge, he, he had organized what he called a polymath project. So back in 2012, um, he got a lot of people on the internet to, to work together to try to solve this, this, this question. And, and they tried many things. Um, you know, lots of, uh, they, they, they had computer programs and, and they, 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 they used graph theory. They used all kinds of, of techniques. Um, so they didn't solve the question, but they, had, they did make an important simplification that uh, um, it's a question about all patterns of, of plus and minus ones, but they, but they could um, reduce the question. If you could solve the question for a certain special type of function, then um, 
then you could solve the, the, the general case. But they didn't know how to, how to handle these special functions. They're called multiplicative functions. Um, but in 2015, there was this breakthrough. Um, so there are these two other number theorists, um, Kaiser Matamaki and uh, Maxim Radziwill. Um, and they managed to prove a, a very nice theorem about multiplicative functions to solve some other question. Um, and that was a real breakthrough. So when, when that happened, I um, actually got very excited. I started working with them. Um, and, I, and we solved some other uh, less well-known problem about multiplicative functions. And then I wrote about it on my blog. So I have this blog where I talk about my mathematics. And um, when I talked about what I did with Matamaki and Radziwill, um, someone on the blog commented, you know, that the type of problems that you were uh, solving were very similar to um, the type of problems that the polymath, that this polymath project had encountered. So that maybe the techniques um, that, that uh, we had used could be useful for, for this, this, this discrepancy problem. And actually, my first reaction when I heard that was that probably not, you know, that, that uh, you know, the questions were somewhat similar, but I actually wrote a comment saying, actually, I think that the questions are quite different. You know, one is trying to prove an upper bound, one is trying to prove a lower bound, they, they, they weren't related. Uh, but then I thought about it a little, a little bit more, and I did see there was a relation. Um, and so I actually, you know, I spent a few weeks, you know, trying to, to make it precise. And, uh, yeah, I, would, I returned to all these old calculations of, of, the, of the polymath project. And, and now that there was this extra result of Matamaki and Maxwell, we could actually um, close the gap. Well, that was exactly what was missing, actually, in the old polymath uh, um, um, arguments. And we were actually to put everything together. And it was, it was very lucky, actually, that, that, that this, this breakthrough of these number theories was exactly what was needed to solve this question. Um, we hadn't realized that the question was so number theoretic in nature, this discrepancy problem. Yeah, so it's, it's it, uh, and now it's, it's quite exciting. I'm, I'm still working with, with uh, Manamaki and Radziwo and some other people to try to, to, to push these new methods further. And I, I think we'll be able to prove more results about uh, these multiplicative functions. Um, one of my dreams is to use these techniques to attack the Goldbach conjecture and also this thing called the, the twin prime conjecture. So uh, the, twin prime, the twin prime conjecture is the conjecture that there are infinitely many pairs of primes that are distance two apart, like 11 and 13, um, or 29 and 31. Um, and um, maybe, maybe you know, these, these methods may, may have something to say about, about this question. We, we still don't quite have it, but uh, yeah, that, that, that is one of my dreams of what, I can, what, uh, what to work on in the next, next few years. I wish I had remembered it more. You know, I was ten. You know, I, 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 you know, I had heard of Erdős, but you know, I didn't realize sort of uh, quite how famous he was. Um, so th there was some mathematics conference in Adelaide, which is the, the city I was, I was born in, and Paul Erdős had some friends um, um, there. So he was he was visiting, um, and he's um, he's always had a history of you know he's he's always been very good to, to talking with with very young uh, mathematically inclined kids. Um, I think he called them epsilons. That was a special name for them. Um, and so, you know, someone introduced uh, um, him to me and we started talking. Um, unfortunately, I don't remember much about what we actually talked about. Um, he did send me a postcard later with a, um, with a math question, which is still unsolved, actually. I would love to solve it. Um, the only thing I remember is that when we talked, he really, it really felt like he was talking to me as uh, like, like an equal, you know, not, not like from a, like an adult to a child. You know, he, he, you know, it was very serious, and he, you know, he gave me a, a, a math question, and, and he listened to what I had to say. I didn't have very many good ideas, but you know, he, he listened to me. Um, yeah, so I, 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 you know, he was always very good with children, I think. Um, hmm. um, well, I, um, yeah, there's certainly a lot of, of working by yourself, you know. I, um, you know, at home, you know, I have a big pile of scratch paper, and, I, and um, when you're in the, in the right mood to do calculations, you can, you can work for hours. My wife always finds it very funny when she sees me on the floor with all these pieces of paper. She takes photographs of me doing that. Um, but the most fun I have, actually, is not working by myself, but, but, but working with, with, with another um, one or more people. At a blackboard, you know, exchanging ideas, it, 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 it is, uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, you, you try lots of things and they don't work, but it's fun to see how they don't work and then, and then you propose things and, and then every so often you, you, you figure out the, the, the right, right way to look at things and it, it, it's, it's always a great feeling. Um, and it's always important, you know, you know so, so these problems take often many days to solve. 
they, it's, it's somehow it's always important to sort of end every day on an optimistic note. You know, that, that you, you have some technique that, that looks promising, and then you know that's a good time to stop and, and, and have dinner or something. Um, yeah. So I think you know, in the past, pe mathematics was a very private activity. You know, people would always work by themselves, but more and more, um, it's become much more social. Um, I think the the, uh, the questions in math have become more complex, more more interdisciplinary. You need different types of knowledge. And uh, so it's much more collaborative. And, and now, you know, with the internet and Skype and so forth, it's much easier to, uh, to work. It used to be that you basically you had to work with someone in the same university as you, but you know, you can work with anybody now. Um, and it's, it's just much more fun, I think, to, to work nowadays. Because, yeah. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's challenging and it's, um, well, it's something that you can play with, you know, like, um, if you have a problem which is difficult, you can, you can work over. You can simplify. You can work over a, a simpler problem first, and then and then and then return to to, to the more general problem. Um, you know, in in most other disciplines, you the problems are given to you. You, you. you can't sort of change them that much. You know, like you know, if you're you know if you study medicine and and, and you, you you research cancer, you know, you you have to you know you have to work on cancer. There's a, you don't have these sort of more simple. Um, uh, Problems to work on. Well, there's a, there's a few, but but I don't know. In in math, you get to pick the problems, and 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 it's uh, so it it really feels like uh, um, almost like a game, you know, that that, that you you, uh, you can play with. Um, yeah, and and uh, whenever you solve some a problem, or even if you don't solve it, you, you learn something, you, and 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 it it, it feel you, you you feel smarter somehow. Just you know, just by, by working with these things. Um, and as I said, you know, being able to discuss what your thoughts with with, uh, with your, your collaborators, and yeah, when you when you're both throwing out ideas and you're both very productive, it's it, it, it's a really uh, um, I don't know high energy experience. Um, yeah, that is I think one of my favorite experiences. Oh, I never know. I mean, there's there's uh, you know it's it's these days there's there's always breakthroughs that come out of nowhere almost, um, that uh, some, someone realizes that, that two fields of mathematics that were, didn't seem to be connected, there was, there was an important connection. And a problem which was very difficult previously because we didn't have the right tools becomes very easy. Um, yeah, so lots of times, you know, I'd, you know, you know, when I write grant proposals, I say, you know, the next three or four years, I'm going to work on X, Y, and Z. And then the next year, there's a breakthrough on, on you know U W and 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 and, and J you know <laughs> and I, I I actually dropped my, pre my previous research and I, I work on that instead. So you have to keep an open mind. I think it's um, yeah I, I I you know I don't actually know what I'll be doing two or three years from now. Yeah, this, this is my first time in in Marseille. You know, it, it's it's very very pleasant. I haven't had a chance yet to explore the city. I think maybe this afternoon I um, I will. But yeah, it's 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 a very nice environment, and uh, um, you know I I I like the the atmosphere here. You know, everyone has 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 to, has lunch together, has dinner together, and, and uh, um, yeah, and and I have I have a, some old friends who are, who are here too. Mm. Yeah, this this is this is a very a very nice place. <laughs>